Welcome back to The Lemon Factor. I'm Chad, and today's video is a follow-up video to a recently released one from a couple weeks ago in which I was sure that I had blown the OEM turbo. After all the testing, all the quarter mile, all the zero to 60, you know, I, I thought with all of the uh, abuse I've put on the car that maybe I had blown the turbo. And I released two videos, the last one of which is when I did fully diagnose it. In the last video, I pulled the turbo off. I wanted to take a look at the compressor wheel, the turbine wheel to see if there was any shaft play. But I also wanted to send off an oil sample to see if that revealed anything. So right before we installed the 271 Kuro, the FK8 hybrid turbo, I did an oil change and I sent a sample off to Blackstone Laboratories. And I waited and I waited and I waited and apparently it got lost in the mail. It took over two weeks to get to Indiana from Colorado, but it finally got there. I wasn't able to show you the results because we still thought it was lost in, in the mail, but in today's video, I got the results a couple days ago. I wanted to share it with you because uh, I was kind of shocked by the results. What I had sent it off for in order to see, I did get that information back and fine, that's good, I'll give you the results, but what it revealed was actually a little bit more shocking. And I think very applicable to all of you with the Honda Accord 10th generation, whether it's the 1.5 liter or the two liters. If you'd like to see what the results were, I'd like to find out what we're gonna do a little bit differently going forward with our project car, then stay tuned. So what were the results of the oil test, the analysis? There's good and there's bad. The good is that the analysis showed that the oil was still good, that there was still life in the oil. So that's great. I changed the oil when our maintenance reminder indicated. So it was at 0%, it was roughly a year, and about 6,000 miles, hard miles granted. Also. The positive is that since the last time we tested our oil, our last oil change, some contaminants that we found initially have been greatly reduced. And those contaminants were not unexpected. So the contaminants I'm speaking of is indicative of a new car, a new engine, and a period in which your car's engine is breaking in and those contaminants are part of that break-in process. So it's nice to see that they're either gone or very, very trace amounts. So another positive. The negative is we have more fuel in our oil than I would like. This time it's over 4%. So we have oil dilution. Oil dilution can definitely cause harm so what are some of the causes of oil dilution? One of the causes could be a problem within your fuel system. It could be a leaky fuel injector. Remember, we have a direct injection engine. Those injectors are sitting right there within your cylinders. However, I don't think that's the case for our car. What I think it is, is how I've been driving it for the past year. I don't have a long commute, thankfully. Everything is very close to where I live, whether that's you know, a grocery store, the bank, the kids' schools. My trips are very, very short. So I, for the most part, don't give my car a long time to warm up. In some cases, it may not fully warm up to operating temperature by the time I'm done with my drive. So one thing that I can do differently is when I do those short trips, I could ensure that the car warms up and that I can make them a little bit longer. So I could go a longer route to make sure that things are heated up, giving the engine uh, a chance to warm up and evaporate, it could also be water too, evaporate uh, the fuel and or the water that is in the oil. Going forward, I am going to test our oil, I think midway through its life. So 
whether that's six months, 3,000 miles, I'm gonna take a look at what the analysis says, see if it's creeping up, see if we have a problem, and I may have to change the oil more frequently. In the meantime, I'll keep an eye on our oil level. So as we have oil dilution, as the fuel is getting into the oil, it's going to bring up our oil level. If I totally ignore this and I let the oil dilution continue or even get worse, what could happen? So as the fuel gets into the oil, it changes the viscosity of your oil. It changes, obviously, the lubrication properties of your oil. We don't want that in the engine and we certainly don't want that with our turbo. We want to make sure that we have as fresh, clean oil as possible that is fully lubricating our turbo, cooling our turbo as much as it can, as it can, and we don't want the fuel in there. So whatever you do, do not ignore this. Check your oil level. I would highly encourage you to send an oil sample out to Blackstone to see for yourself if you have oil dilution. Now, of course, as I keep an eye on this, we may find that it's more than just how I drive the car and we'll have to deal with it. But I wanna put this together to give you guys some insight to a potential problem, not just with Honda Accords, but with a lot of direct injection engines. So with that said, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like. I think we're done for today. Thank you very much for joining and until next time.